This video is entitled Software and goes along with Chapter 2 of our Project Management for Technology course. I'm Dr. Renault from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video lecture. In this video, we'll be talking about software often used in enterprises, from enterprise resource planning software to customer relationship management software to electronic document records management software, content management systems, financial systems, and then we'll talk about general purpose databases. In your business courses and other courses or your, your per professional life, you may have heard of an ERP or an enterprise resource planning software solution. ERPs are huge, expensive, complex systems that range in the millions of dollars to, to purchase and implement for an organization. They take years and, and dozens and, and sometimes hundreds of employees to implement an ERP completely and correctly. But the great thing about an ERP is it's a single modular system to handle all of the back office needs of a company from human resources to purchasing to accounts receivable to inventory to accounting to, to all of that kind of stuff. And all of the functions work together. Once you learn how to do one function, the user interfaces are, are similar through the whole thing. If you have a vendor customer, it's available in all of them. Your budgets, your account reports, your account numbers are available through all of the different functions. We don't have to integrate multiple systems together. We don't have to create all that integration stuff. It's there. Um, it's a really great way to manage a company. Uh, the problem with, with an ERP is, again, it's a huge, expensive, complex system. And if you already have a solution switching to another ERP, or if you don't have a unified system changing the way you do your business to fit the ERP can be painful and, and can take, it's a, let's just say it's a huge project. Um, Oracle makes a couple of solutions. There's a company called SAP and, a, and PeopleSoft and uh, Workday, and there are several other, other companies that make these ERP systems. Um, and most major corporations have one, but um, again, it's a, it's a huge lift as a project to implement an ERP. Another piece of software you'll hear lots of companies have are a CRM package or customer relationship management software system. Um, what a CRM does is it collects all the customer data in one place from demographics to sales to customer service to marketing. The really cool thing about a CRM, if it's implemented well and correctly, it allows you to look at the trends and patterns. It allows you to better service and to sell new products because you know what a customer has bought, in recommenders, and all that kind of stuff. Um, typically, a CRM is a, is a big, giant cloud system that connects um, customer service, to sales, to, again, uh, advertising, to marketing, to, to uh, uh, lots of different parts of the enterprise together. And your CRM, then, you can see how it's the sort of front-end um, place where, where your front-end uh, employees that are customer-facing are using the CRM, where your back-office employees are using the ERP, and these two systems, of course, got to talk to each other. It takes a real commitment, though, when you're collecting all this customer data. It takes, uh, it, it, it takes uh, forethought, it takes planning to be able to use the CRM to its full advantage. Um, and, and quite a commitment. And there are several CRM softwares out there, or you might decide that with your specific company's individual needs that it's time to design your own. 
The next type of system I want to talk about is electronic document and records management system. Now, these may be two separate systems, an EDM or an ERM, or they could be combined. Stop and think about uh, schools need a, a records management system to record students and classes and grades and transcripts and, and all of that kind of stuff. A real estate company needs a, a records management system to manage the contracts, the disclosures, the, the offers, the acceptances, the closings, and all of those things. A court would, of course, have, have their own um, records management and document system to manage the pleadings, proceedings, discoveries, and all the other things that, that go on in a court. Um, often these documents uh, are moved through an EDM as, as through the system as they're being used, for instance, um, uh, and collect signatures, these documents do. So here at the university, we're using a, a program called DocuSign where uh, a blank document is filled, you fill out the form, you sign it, it gets sent to the next person, the next person, the next person, until it reaches the final destination where it's stored, which is cool. The uh, Your electronic documents and records management could be scanned documents, they could be indexed, or all kinds of things. Another thing that we need to, to, to maintain is how long are we going to maintain each of these documents for? Is this a document like a tax document that you should keep for seven years or is this a document you should keep forever? Who needs to see this? Strict access controls are, are in place in an EDM or an ERM to, to maintain confidentiality of a document to maintain, uh, to, to allow who can see it, who can't see it, who can modify it, who can't modify it, who can touch it, who can't. Um, and the EDM and ERM uh, ensure that a document is genuine. For instance, you order a transcript from the university, our records management software generates a transcript that we are 100% sure is genuine and correct. So, so these document records management softwares are uh, an important part of, of a business and lots of businesses, especially service businesses, um, really desperately need these and use these. There's another type of software known as a content management system. Now, content management is different than a records management because a content management system is usually used to manage and maintain a website and all the content and all of the media of that website. The data, the actual pieces of the page, the text, the images, the media, and all of those things are stored in, usually in a database somewhere on a, on a server that then passes it from the data layer up to the presentation layer where the user actually sees it as HTML. And that's why CMSs are often made up of two parts. The management parts, where the screens, where the users can log in, modify the website at the, at the screen, can use the WYSIWYG tools, the editor tools to create the content. And then there's the delivery side that actually runs the web server that the external customers or external users will be used. The great thing about a CMS is it allows for consistency because you know we'll have a template, a co corporate template with corporate colors and a standard menu bar. And, and once that's all defined, it becomes, when all of our pages are in the content management system, it becomes very easy for us to to, to make tweaks to the whole look and feel and to keep it consistent. The CMS will allow multiple users to work on content simultaneously. Um, it'll generate HTML that's usually uh, compliant with uh, and usually works, is adapted for smartphones and tablets and websites, I mean, and, and computers. Um, it'll generate uh, HTML and content for um, handicapped, uh, visually impaired, and, and hearing impaired individuals. And your CMS can also be integrated into your e-commerce system 
which is either part of your CMS or a separate system that connects into your CMS so that your e-commerce sites, your e-commerce pages are all tied seamlessly into your CMS. And even your CRM, your customer relationships management software, could tie into your CMS, allowing for customer self-service areas and portals and all kinds of, of cool stuff like that. Another type of very common software you'll see in an organization are financial systems. Financial systems handle accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger, budgeting, banking, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, in a large ERP system, financial systems would be one piece of the ERP or a group of, of modules within the ERP. But in a lot of organizations, these financial systems sit separately from their other systems and aren't as integrated as an ERP in the entire organization. Um, financial systems like QuickBooks and, and FreshBooks and, and other systems, Peachtree and, and all of those, those types of systems, um, again, may be part of a larger something, but often are not. A financial system has to be accurate, has to be secure, and has to always balance. It has to include all the financial reportings and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's really what drives the whole back end of the company. And, and you know, I, I like to think of, of a financial system in an organization as kind of like the bearing in the center of a wheel because every part of the organization connects back to the financial system. Every part of the organization has a account number, has, has expenses, incomes, has financial reporting, has profit and loss for each individual department, each individual segment of an organization. So everybody connects back into the central hub of the financial system. Now, so far we've been talking about uh, specific types of software, but, but all of these systems rely upon a database or databases to manage and store the volumes, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of records that each of these systems have in them. So a database comes in two kind of flavors, the structured database and the unstructured database. The structured database is by far the most common and is great for storing things like transactional data, sales records, customer records, um, uh, you know, purchases, checks, invoices, all of those kinds of things, inventory, items, quantity on hand, quantity sold, all of those kinds of things really fit into a structured data. A structured database. And most of the systems are ba based on these. Um, a structured database uses tables of data. Think of a spreadsheet with rows and columns, but unlike a spreadsheet where you can put anything you want in a row or a column, a structured database requires each row to, to represent one instance of something, a transaction or a customer or a um, a, a detail record of some sort, and then each column represents a certain piece of the data, or we call them attributes. Um, each of these rows, as we call them, or tuples, as they're called, within a database table, within the, that spreadsheet kind of thing, you can think of it that way, um, contain identifiers, we call them keys, that allow connecting the row of one sheet to the row of another sheet. So we may have a sheet of customers with customer numbers, and then we have a sheet of orders with the customer number. And if we want the name of the customer, we have to go over to the customer sheet to get the customer's name and customer information because it's not on the order. We just have a customer number. But these structured databases are rock and roll, absolutely amazing, and are great for transactional data. Um, we have a whole course in this, BUIS 2400. Most of you have had that course, so that should be a nice, uh, just a few, few second summary on what a database is. Now, there's another type of database known as an unstructured database, which can also be called a document type database. 
And uh, in a document database, we store a document that contains lots of stuff, not necessarily rows and columns, not necessarily keys and tuples and all of that in the structured way, but it, it stores more, yeah, it stores more documents. Um, a catalog entry, a movie, a sound, a picture, a letter, a book, you know, those kinds of things don't fit real well into the structured model of rows and columns with all the little attributes, but more are, are a document or, a, or an item, and we want to save the item. So we use an unstructured or sometimes called a NoSQL database to store those. So there are different kinds of databases for different needs. Some small databases like desktop databases like Microsoft Access and SQLite um, as, uh, that, that run on a single computer and, and can do, you know, managing a few thousand records to huge enterprise databases that, that manage hundreds of millions of records for users all over the globe distributed across multiple servers. So, uh, yeah, databases run the gamut from little tiny to, to, to great big, but they're the, they're the storage engine behind all of the great software of the world. The content of this video um, was, was assembled with the help of uh, Kim Heldman's CompTIA Project Plus Study Guide, third edition, by John Wiley, uh, published by John Wiley and Sons. This video is copyright 2023 by James M. Renault, PhD. Um, you can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu if you have any questions or concerns. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 international license, and I'd like to say thank you for watching.